What is this? What is this? Aspire. 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 Wow. Direct one's hopes or ambitions towards achieving something. Wow. We never thought that we might aspire to those heights. We never thought. No one ever told me this and that. Synonyms. Desire. Wow. <gasps> right. The first one. Desire. <laughs> wow. See, because aspiration, if not chasing the relentless dragon, I don't know what it is. It's aspire. Right. Aspire. A little twitty sp spiraling thing that just plash never goes. It's a fractal, a fractal, and you're just hypnotized, right? Because it's a dream of <laughs> exactly hunger for, right? A relentless longing, right? Long a yearn, <sighs> rise high, tower, right? You want to relentlessly be the tower that just blasts through the atmosphere to the space and beyond, right? You want to just connect with all the ways somehow because you're the ultimate hive mind. You're the ultimate synapse. You are the co you are the receptor, right? You're the antenna and your third eye is just blasting, right? And this and no. For what is Aspire? To, uh, direct. So what does a director do? Well, he directs you. So that you bash the character in how he wants it to come out. Right? So Aspiring is a, a, a parameter, you know, there's parameters to whatever it is that you have hopes and ambitions for in the ways of the world because what else would it be you're like well of course i have to get a job because I, that's what it is to live and this and this and that wow what a shame right everyone's just following some bash directed aspiration some bash tower you're built you're you're the little co-builder of the bash tower that you think you're building for yourself that you are but no You're just, you've been given a role to fulfill in the overall tower that you might call society. But no, it's the entire notion of what you call living. But somehow, as long as I have aspiration. Aspire. Aspire. Some dream of my own bash. And sure, I'll find some other bashes that will, you know, raise the same flag as me and this and that. So I, they're my clan. And this and that and this. Wow. So creating relentless little clans and cliques and splashing, smishing, splashing divisions and walls. And then you say, no walls. But then you're like, eh, they're not part of my clan. What a shame. Forgive. Love your enemy, right? No, but you're like, no. They're going to just kill us all. Right? This and that and this and this and that. Wow, exactly. Because ultimately, you fear to live. Because you worship death. Inspire, right? So you have aspire and then you have inspire. To fill someone. So the other one's to direct your desire. And this is to fill it. Somehow. Fill someone. So how do you fill someone? You guessed it. In and out. With the urge or ability to do or feel something. Whoa. Just to do or feel something. Right? Just fake it till you feel something. <laughs> Just do this little pattern until you feel something. Doesn't matter what it is as long as it's something. Especially to do something creative. Right? What's creative? You don't know, but you call it innovation, right? But innovation to you, what needs incentive, right? And rewards, right? 
Otherwise, eh, we'd just be relentless bashes. Just, you know, bashing and just somehow not doing anything. Just laying around, kicking the dust. Somehow we would just be too, we would be simple, the simple jocks that we were before. And, oh, what a drag, right? I mean, how simple jocks were they that they didn't even know how to speak. They didn't even know how to speak. That's why now all our teeny tiny little words are just so much better because somehow it just makes us all feel good. In relentless inspiration and relentless aspiration and relentless in and out and in and out and in and in and in and in and in out and the other and somehow you're in again oh wow and you're you're in the spire you're in the tower but of course you call it oh i'm just relentlessly huffing and puffing and stretching and just laying on a mat and just being one being one being one with the flesh you know yes you're the synthesis, right? The spirit and the flesh. Now I'm going to execute my goddess power and my godly power and this and this. Smash. Nothing. Just a manipulator. Right? A manipulator. And what do you call manipulators? You're like, oh, narcissist. Have you been in a relationship with a narcissist? Oh, it's horrible. This and this. Smashed. Who knew you're all inspired? <laughs> you're all cooked up. You're all in a relentless state of inspiration and aspiration. But who knew? They're mocking you because who knew? It's the breath and in the sense of uh, what did you do to even breathe? Um, See? <gasps> that's what I do. I huff and puff. That's how I control it. That's, that's me refining my elements. Smash. No, wait, I mean, what is it? You don't know. What is life? Oh, what? What is truth? Oh, it's relative. Uh, what is the way? Oh, you're, the way to you is just how to stimulate some motivation that causes some incline to persuade you and encourage you so that you can continue the influence that you think you're rousing to move forward and stir up some bash that somehow on spur of the moment you're going to go and energize and galvanize all those incitements and impel exactly see that's how the people you worship speak just saying the same thing over and over and over crimson and clover but see they couldn't wait they couldn't wait to just bash you and tell you even in their cooked up books of definitions and this and that. And you're like, well, of course. It's linguistics and this and that. How else do you think we can communicate, you bash? Wow. Because you rely on little teeny tiny things, right? Instead of wisdom. Right? To you, it's just how to cook up the words and the spells and, this, and the enchantments by repetition and this and this. Manipulation of per perception and all what you call this, 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 that, this, the other, this, never this, somehow this sometimes, but this exceptionally that, and this and this, that's the OR, but somehow now it's in, and now it's out, and somehow we're just totally obliminated. Well, of course. And it only took 0.71 seconds to bash out all these results, right? And you that somehow you're like, whoa, I'm so amazed. And now I have hope. It gives me aspiration. I'm so, right? Wow, no. Because you're the relentless <laughs> aspirator <laughs> or whatever. Vacuum. Void, right? Because you're relentless bash, hope you're longing, right? For what? You have no clue. You make it your own purpose or something. Or somehow you think it's it's been your legacy to do. And that's how you're going to be recognized in this. This is how you're going to push forward your community in this. And, well, 
All because you want to rise high. Rise high like the phoenix from the ashes. So you're just cooking up your own little stove just like everyone else. Thinking you're, you're, you're just so amazing, right? Because what it, in order for all anything to happen, right, there must be incentive. Otherwise, you say, well, how am I supposed to make a living if I don't even have money to live? So I can't do the things that I actually want to do because my aspiration only lasts a little while. But then I had to just bash and compromise with the world. And blah, blah, blah. And then you'll have the others that say, no, you just didn't commit fully to your passion and this and that. They're, 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 they are the ones that will boast and they're saying, wow, I would love what I do and make coin and lots of it. Wow, that just sounds like a relentless infomercial, right? Wow, it just sounds like, hey, I did this and it worked for me. Wow, what a shame. Right? Who cares? Right? Boaster. You couldn't wait to boast. Exactly. Why is it that somehow it's just affiliation with some bash behavior that rewards in coin and accolades and prestige and this and that and the other. And then certain other ones are just like, ah, if you want to be that, well, pff, good luck, buddy. You just have to be that, that, that. You just have to crush it and blah, blah, blah. No, who knew that even in the fringes, anything that's out there crushing, well, it's, it's exactly doing that, crushing. So the same thing that's happening in the, in the supposed not fringes. Oh, no, but they're just so indie and just so cool. And they're just so, ah, oh, they come up from the subcultures and bash, 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 nothing. Just relentless little pressure valves to let off some steam and this and that and that. But uh, no, you're still Thomas the Tank Engine just smashing through. Right? You're just smashing through, rising higher because it doesn't matter. You're going to stick it to the man and drop off. Just drop up. No, exactly. You're a relentless little de rebel just smashing in your own de de just defecation. Right? You say, well, I have incentive, so shut up. Right? Well, good for you. Look, look. Incentive. Incentive. Oh, incentive. Wow. A thing that motivates or encourages one to do something. A thing. Just something. Just something, right? It couldn't be a certainty. Right? Because you have all these little bash words that you say, I must collect all these and have these be on my chart of personality. Please. Give me this word. How do I get this word? Oh, give, give, I want all, I want to be all of them. And this, and that, and that, and this. Wow, smashed. Right, because then you can say, yes, my incentive is this. And I'm going to go out. That motivates me. Yes, finally. Smashed. Because you're void. There's no certainty in you, right? So that's why you need things like this that are called incentive exactly so that you would go out and somehow fulfill your ins your inspiration and all your aspirations and this and that and that all while you're just abusing the life you have the life that is the relentlessly there bringing in for you day in day out wow who knew And you're relentlessly looking for proof of, you know, that you're doing things right and just somehow based on the rewards. And then you can say, yes, it's working. Reward. Reward. Oh, thank you. A thing given. Just uh, relentless things. Just things, 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 things. A thing given in recognition of one's service, effort, or achievement. Make a gift of something to someone in recognition of their services, efforts, or achievements. Recompense, pay, remunerate, give a bounty to, give a present to, make something worth an offering. That was, oh, they don't mention offering. They just have all these bashes. Exactly, because an offering is different than a reward. Exactly. But they won't. They will. I mean, it's it's all somehow just see money, 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 coin. They might as well just put reward equals coin. 
Right? That's it. Reward coin. Things that shimmer and bash, bash, bash. Somehow you recognize for it. Wow, amazing. And then somehow you're a bonus. Yay, I'm in the premium status. Or I did something and somebody patted me on the back. Wow, amazing. Who knew? Right? Why do people need a pat on the back? I mean, don't people know what it is to live and therefore, wow. Um, either you're going to engage with what must be done to endure life or you're bash and say, eh, it could be better. Somehow it's just not good enough. It could be better, people. Now let's go out there and smash everyone and tell them that they're smashing. And so we're just going to smash them into being better somehow. Because my better is just relative from your better and better, better, but somehow it's just all good. It's all better. Smashed. Award. Right? An award. Give or order the giving of something as an official payment, compensation, or prize to. So all these awards, right? See? He was awarded the Purple Heart. That's his payment. Some bash, you know, a little metal that just pushes on his pennant and suit. A prize or other mark of recognition given in honor of achievement. High esteem in this, being in being in favor of and out of favor and in and out and in and out and in and out. Right? So you're either awarded or rewarded in your in your bash ritualized behavior. And therefore, that's how you determine <clears throat> whether or not your aspiration or your inspiration was working, right? So if you do if you do not receive the approval of the world, somehow whatever you aspired or inspired for is bashed, right? Mm. But somehow, if you prove yourself right. Who knew that the things that you aspire or are inspired by are already calculated to be something that the world can reward you in and does relentlessly and then shapeshifts and refurbishes and sells it back to you with a different name and different bash image. So therefore you think that you're relentlessly just moving something, but no, you're just stagnant, defiled, right? Just bash, chasing some carrot dangled in front of you forever, never to even come close to touching it. Forever reaching forward and longing. Right? Right, exactly. Longing. Oh, I'm relentless. I, I aspire this and I aspire that and I just go out and smash and bring it forth somehow. No. What you're doing is just relentlessly seeking reward. An award for if you won't do anything, if there isn't any of this. <clears throat> and that's what, you know, every all the psychologists say. Well, exactly. It's the payoff, people. What are the things that, you know, bash, you behave and do in your life that somehow bash, give you reward. But then you're somehow in a very violent and toxic, you know, family or relationship or this or this or the other. And they'll they'll keep it at that level, right? They'll say, um, just go in there and then bash change it. Now you're in control, buddy. Now you know it and you've identified it, blah, 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 blah. Now you can go and be your own master. No, who knew that they were being their master the whole time? And that's why they bash are in that. And then you can go out there and point it out to them and be like, well, you're bash, buddy. No, they're doing exactly what... The bash, you know, sorcerers that call themselves psychologists and bash, bash, bash and therapists and this and this and that. That's what they're that's what they do. They keep you in a state of somehow that you are somehow bettering. No, it's just you coming out and somehow boasting and all the little tools that they have already set out for you. To keep you bashed and now further brainwash but now you're further brainwashed and you think wow 
I'm so much more confident to go out there and get the things that I want. Exactly. Still in the same batch thing. So now you've just changed and refurbished the same program. And now you just have a different interface or whatever batch. And you're like, wow, it's so much better this way. Mm. Right? Because why are people even engaging in this? Well, exactly. Because they believe in the hero's journey. In narratology, right? Narrators, the study of narration, right? Narratives, right? Wow, the narratives, oh, wow. Exactly. So who knew that in the narrative of today's said world, the narrative is what is manipulated through what people call their language and bash, bash, bash. But ultimately, it's the bash notion of how you engage in that narrative day in, day out that truly just governs everything that happens. But no, 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 it's just you pushing the paper and you screaming and you saying that and that. No. For everything ultimately re makes re reference going back to what the narrative is of whatever it is that it you s call life. It all will go back to the narrative and how it, you know, either bashes, agrees with it or defies it or this or this. Somehow, you, yeah, that is the bash thing that somehow is indestructible. People will say, you can't, how can you deny, you know, but, but, that this is bash, but exactly, you're saying, um, how can you deny life, buddy, it, right, they'll twist it on you, because, of course, they'll say, well, of course, are you going to deny that this building exists, and, well, of course not, but look at you, you're the complete little soldier just fighting on the side of the narrative. For whenever the narrative is challenged, it will fight and just smash. The fury will be seen. The fury is always seen. And it doesn't matter what aspect of the narrative. The narrative is Medusa, shape-shifting. It's the swarm. And it, it, do, it doesn't wait to lash out. It does not wait. It will do it immediately. Just like a, a cobra, and you can say, I can come to train the cobra now, me and the cobra are one. No. Smashed. Just because some bash can manipulate a cobra with some music? No. But somehow now you think, oh, I'm, I'm the manipulator. No, you are being, you're the lab rat in the sense of man's, man, you, man is doing, abusing himself. Relentlessly. Subduing himself in pl in the in the in the pleasures and in the uh, manipulated aspects of the little teeny tiny elements and the dust that you can come to bash together and bash bash bash, and then you just blast yourself into some bash notion that you can just blow through the ball of gas that somehow is so strong and pulling all the planets. Amazing! You're just gonna blast through and go to some other multiverse of plexus. Wow! Amazing. Look at all this bash, right? And comparative mythology, the monomyth or the hero's journey is the common template of a broad category of tales and lore that involve a hero who goes on an adventure and in decisive crisis wins a victory and then comes home changed or transformed. Right. And people are like, yeah, that's called rites of passage. You bash all indigenous cultures did that and all the shamans and blah, 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 blah. For what is a man? What is a woman? What do they worship? Exactly. Anything outside of their creator? The true promise, right? Life everlasting. Truth, the way. It's just bash idol worship. You know, wanting to have some permanence in the 
in this supposed fleshly life that you say you can c come and have some sort of rule over and however you say it is no for in this state of doubt awareness you are forever just relentlessly sleep bound to have a sense of victory what do you win at what is victory right oh no <clears throat> Come home, changed or transformed. Well, the study of hero myth narrative started in 1871 with anthropologist Edward Bernay Tyler's observation of common patterns and plots of the hero's journeys. Blah, blah, blah. Later on, otherwise, introduced various theories on hero myth narrative, such as Otto Rank and his Freudian psychoanalytic approach to myth. Lord Re Regland's unification of myth and rituals and eventually hero myth pattern studying studies were popularized by Joseph Campbell, who was influenced by Carl Jung's view of myth. In his 1949 work, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, Campbell describes the basic narrative pattern as follows. Wow, exactly, right? The hero with a thousand faces. What does that even mean? Oh, it just means how you can come and refine yourself to be, you know, the one, the one, the true godlike figure. And not be like the bash, simple jack that is just split into a thousand faces. For now, you are the ultimate bash. And you're here to now go in there and fuse and show everyone the light. What is going on? A hero ventures forth from the world of common day into a region of supernatural wonder. Fabulous forces are there encountered and decisive victory is won. The hero comes back from this mysterious adventure with the power to bestow boons on his fellow man. Bestow boons. Bestow boons. Enchant. Right? Leaving a sense of inspiration. He's going to fill them and blast them. Right? What is going on? What is going on? Campbell's blah, 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 described narratives of Guadalba, Moses, and Christ in terms of monomyth. While others, such as Otto Rank and Lord Raglan, describe hero narratives powers in terms of Freudian, Freudian uh, psych psychoanalysis and ritualistic senses, critics argue that the concept is too broad or general to be f much usefulness in comparative mythology. Others say that the hero's journey is only part of the monomyth. The other part is the sort of different form of color or color of the genome's hero's journey. <laughs> the genome's journey. <laughs> well, look. Departure. Initiation. Return. Why can't it be just departure and return? Right? No. Ha initiation. The road of trials. The meeting with the goddess. The woman as temptress. Atonement with the Father Abyss. Oh, apo uh, wow. Apothesis. Apotheosis. The ultimate boon. The return. So th this is the dissolution the, the and then the return. Refusal of the return. The magic flight. Rescue from without. The crossing of the return threshold. Master of the, the two worlds. Master of two worlds, freedom to live. Master of two worlds. This step is usually represented by transcendental hero like Jesus or Guanta Buddha. For a hero, for a human hero, it may mean achieving a balance between the material and spiritual. A balance. Wow, they just had to j lump 
Jesus and, and Buddha together. They couldn't wait. How did Jesus balance the material and the spiritual? Uh, no. He defeated death. Right? Revealed that the true promise is is true. Life everlasting. Who, for whoever so chooses and sees and stands in truth, seeks the refuge of truth to relentlessly seek the wisdom of the Father to endure the flesh in life. Whoa! For truly in this state of flesh we see the knowledge of good and evil. So deceiving you into thinking that somehow you're the balance and the synth synthesis and you're here to balance good and evil. No. You're here to endure it in the refuge of truth. The true promise. Not some bash, you know, well, it could, which is too complex. We just couldn't decide. It's just, we can, we compare, we can compare, but then it's just too complex to apply, blah, blah, blah. And they disagree and they'll write one of those books about how, well, this and the other smashed. Master of two worlds, right? The spiritual and the material. Wow. Wow. You cannot serve two masters. Who knew? But here they say you can. Yay. And then you're back free to live. Wow. As do as thou wilt. Comfortable and competent, both in the inner and outer worlds. In and out and in and out and in and out and in and out. And you call that consciousness. And that's why you say, yes, I'm relentlessly in and out and in and out and in and out and in and out. Smashed. Smashed. No notion. But somehow you call that freedom. Wow. What a shame. Freedom to live. Master Mastery leads to freedom. Mastery of what exactly? Worship of the light and how you can shapeshift and manipulate. So that's the aspired mastery. But then mastery, once you get it, then leads to freedom from the fear of death. Which in turn is the freedom to live. Right? Once you bash, get free of the fear of death, now you're free to live. No, you're afraid of life, and that's why you worship death. So they flip it on you. Right? Thinking you, you're, you're no, you, you, oh, nothing will stop me, not even death. When it, when it, what, of course, is it not my life? will be taken so what am I living exactly because that's the true promise and you you're living who know who knew in the vapor of the life you call life you you're living we're all living so exactly what is going on? Some past journey, you know, journey. Look at all the wow, George Lucas, Star Wars, wow, the power myth, Star Wars, the power myth again, National Air and Space Museum, wow, Moby Dick and all this shop, blah 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 blah, feminist literature and female heroines within the monomyth, giant air. They couldn't wait. The psyche, the story of the metamorphoses known as the golden ass. <laughs> oh, wow. They, I mean, they couldn't write it better themselves. Wow. Mm. 
See, criticism. Scholars have questioned the validity or usefulness of the monomyth category. They're like, why do you just put it blah, blah, blah? But no, they, they believe in archetypes and all this and that and this and this and stock characters and this and this. But somehow, we don't want it to just be some map that fits them all. That would just give it away. That would just give up all the refurbished ways of convincing man to just worship himself and bash and go do what he wants. And then co somehow come back to deceive his community into bashing just like him. All right, because no, the the wisdom of the of the word of the father is, the freedom. The peace. Filleth with love, unconditional. But instead, no, you're gonna give it up to just go bash and go backpacking and just smash and just smash your own way, no matter what. Nobody's gonna grab my way, bash. I'm that confident and I have that incentive to just smash. I love it. And this and that and that. Right, because what is the prodigal son, right? And first, what is love? Because three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Exactly. Love stands alone in the sense of it's the greatest of these. And exactly, it's the unconditional love of the Father that brings forth life day in, day out. But no, somehow you call it, eh, it's just some spinning stuff that's just somehow spinning and spinning and just relentlessly, but eventually it'll die out somehow. And this and that and this and this and somehow we just have to make sure that we just somehow cook up our flesh so that it regenerates and lives forever. Yay! Smashed. What are you doing? Complete denial of life. Complete denial. All because you're thinking you're creating incentives for the reward of creating a life for yourself. That's the reward for you, creating and being able to manipulate your life. And he said, a man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that falls to me. So he divided his wealth between them. And not many days later, the younger son gathered everything together and went on a journey into a distant country. And there he squandered his estate with loose living. Now when he had spent everything and s severe famine occurred in that country and he began to be impoverished. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would have gladly filled his stomach with the pods that the swine were eating. And no one was giving anything to him. But when he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hard men have more than enough bread? But I am dying here with hunger. I will get up and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. So he got up and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion for him and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly bring out the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fattened calf, kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead 
and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. And they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing, and summoned one of his servants and began inquiring what these things could be. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fat calf because he has received him back safe and sound. But he became angry and was not willing to go in. And his father came out and began pleading with him. But he answered and said to his father, Look, for so many years I have been serving you and I've never neglected a command of yours. And yet you have never given me a young goat so I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who was devo devoured your wealth with prostitutes, you killed the fat cow for him. And he said to him, Son, you have always been with me, and all this is mine, is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, for this brother of yours was dead and has begun to live and was lost and has been found. Whoa, right? No, 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 it couldn't be, right? It couldn't be that the relentless hero's journey, right, that they're selling to you, is Bashhood. But look at all the little teeny tiny names they give. They're all the steps. So it's it's a manual. So like, guys, if you want to do this, this is how you do it. Go out and crush and go out there and be somebody. And use this as a relentless inspiration and bash, bash, bash so that you may continue in your aspirations in life. Yes, go ahead. Go out there and be somebody, little Billy. Come on, little Jane. Don't you want to be like Jane Eyre? Don't you want to stand up for women's rights and have her be equal to man and surpass man and just crush as she wants? Come on, what's the matter with you, little girl? Don't you want that? Huh? 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 So what is what is all of this? Well, exactly. The return home, because surely we uh, we were deceived into taking some bash hero's journey. Where in the end you come out confirming to serve two masters that you have you're, that you're the synthesis. Wow, th this is the manual to how to just believe yourself to be the bash you know alchemist in the flesh and just cook it out, cook it up. And somehow help man. But no. Bestow boons. Oh. Just. They want to be epic. For what is the defeat? Yes. The defeat. And in, in abiding in the commandments. And through in God and through God defeating the lie. Not man standing alone and saying, You shall not pass and this and this. Wow. That's what the armies of man did against he who sat on the horse. That through his mouth protruded a sword that just slayeth. With truth, who knew? But no, to you, you're gonna just go out there and get f define your own truth, right? Just bash your fear of death. Somehow, you're gonna overcome it with your confidence and just go out and boast, boast and boast and boast of how you defeated all the Medusas on the challenge road. No, you are the challenged road. Just split, simple jacked into thinking that you were just too simple jacked to even figure it out. Wow. So what is going on? What is going on? But since we belong to the day, 
let's be sober. We must put on the breastplate of faith and love and the hope of salvation as a helmet. Who knew?